During late January, I usually start germinating some seeds, but I always had the same question. What kind of growing medium works the best when it comes to germinating seeds? I decided to experiment and start germinating some seeds using different grow mediums and to compare which one works better and which one doesn't work better. So in this video, we're going to actually look at that experiment and find out which kind of medium did grow the best when it comes to germinating those seeds. And I was pleasantly surprised. Let's go. What's going on my plant people? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, house plants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy and welcome to my seed station. This experiment came out of frustration actually because I am really battling some fungus gnats and I found some in my soil. Them fungus gnats are a pain in the ass and when you have so many plants and you got a fungus gnat issue, they tend to spread a lot. So that kind of brought me into this experiment. I wanted to know what kind of growing mediums would actually work better when it comes to germinating the seeds and would they do something about these fungus gnats? So let's get into it. The first one was soil. That was gonna be considered my control, being that we always use soil as a growing medium. The second one was vermiculite, straight vermiculite by itself. The next one was something really unconventional. I just wanted to try it out to see if it worked, was actually rock wool, but not the standard rock wool that's already shaped into a growing pot. This is actually rock wool insulation. The last two mediums I had were two different forms of moss. I had your standard peat moss, but I also had sphagnum moss. I use sphagnum moss a lot when it comes to my house plants, so I wanted to see if the sphagnum moss was just as good or not better than peat moss. For this experiment, I had two different trays. This one had the rock wool and the soil, and this one had the vermiculite and the, you know, the two mosses down in the bottom. The first comparison was how well did it hold on to moisture? How well did it hold on to water? Right off the bat, that rock wool looked pretty good, but it also reminded me of fiberglass. So I didn't know if that was actually good for your lungs or not good for your lungs. It teared relatively easy and it was easy to fill into these square cells. However, my drawback when it comes to the rock wool is that it did not absorb moisture well. It took a long time for that rock wool to soak up that water. So I already knew off the back that was gonna be a problem. The second issue I had along with that rock wool installation is that it did not stay wet at all. I constantly had to add water to this and all it did was just dry out. It dried out so much, I basically had to water it every day. And that was frankly too much work for me. So a lot of my seedlings actually died. If you can find a way to keep this rock wool moist at all times, then this is actually a viable option because I did have seedlings growing through this. However, they all died being that this shit dried up really, really fast. It did work though, but wow, watering was a problem. Now keep in mind when you have these grow lights so close to the, you know, your mediums, this has a tendency of drying out your soil a lot faster. So this test of which one needed more watering than the other was really good to figure out. Now, when it comes to the soil and water, we already know how that works. We already know the standard soil and the water requirements. So that's just basically the control because we always use the soil as a standard. We also know the watering problems when it comes to soil, retaining too much moisture, if you don't have enough drainage, so on and so forth. So that is pretty much self-explanatory. I don't really have to go into too much detail about the soil. The major drawback when it comes to using soil is those damn fungus gnats. Yo, I cannot avoid fungus gnats. I really did not see any fungus gnats with the vermiculite, the sphagnum moss, or the rock wool. I only saw fungus gnats when it came to the stupid soil. That is a turn off if I've ever seen one. I hated it, which is why I've been doing this experiment. Now, when it came to that vermiculite, oof. In the beginning, I was skeptical about it because of the way it looked. It looked very crumbly and it looked like it was not gonna stay inside of these seed cells. The trick was to actually moisten the vermiculite before you put them into these cells. Once the vermiculite was moistened up, you actually had better control of it and it actually did pretty good. So I can't complain about that one. Yes, it did hold on to some good water. However, it did dry out a little bit faster than the soil. Not as fast as the rock wool, but still kind of fast. And the way that you can tell that it dried up is the color of the vermiculite. When the vermiculite is moistened, it actually has a darker color. When the vermiculite dried up and was in need of water, not only did my plants kind of droop, but the uh, vermiculite was actually dried and lighter in color. Now, when it comes to the sphagnum moss and the peat moss, 
We all know that peat moss and sphagnum moss hold on to tremendous amounts of water, which actually worked out really good. But one of the drawbacks was that it dried out a lot faster than the soil and the vermiculite. Now, when it came time to fertilizing your seedlings, I did fertilize regular with each one, but I did notice a difference when it came to the vermiculite. We all know that soil is actually live. It's got bacteria. It's got a little bit of fungi in there. It's basically alive. So that soil has some nutrients already in the soil. That is not the case when it comes to vermiculite. Vermiculite has no nutrients whatsoever. So you have to be on top of your game when it comes to fertilizing. As you see here with my bok choy, whoa, it is just yellowing. But that can also be because there's too many in here. But that is not the case when we're looking at the bok choy over here in the soil. Can we see that it's just mainly mostly green? I mean, there is a little few yellow spots, but not nearly as much as that vermiculite. I learned a lot from this experiment. So I guess you could be asking, so which one do I like the best? I got a few pros and cons. I like the soil. I didn't really have a problem with it, but the only thing, those damn fungus gnats, yo, that was a major no-no and I hated it a lot. That vermiculite actually worked out pretty good. The only drawback that I saw was actually when it was already in its dry state. It doesn't have any nutrients. It doesn't have anything that's gonna maintain its viability. What's the difference between the sphagnum moss and the peat moss, you're probably asking yourself. Well, to be honest, they're in the same family. They're both two different type of mosses. I guess it's just a matter of personal preference. So, Jackie, get to the point. Which one do you like the best? It turns out that I like the sphagnum moss more. That's just my personal opinion. Maybe because I've messed with it more and I know how to handle sphagnum moss better. I mean, peat moss is the same way. I'm just partial to sphagnum moss, but you can use peat moss. It works out in the same way. The water requirements are the same. The nutrient requirements are the same. So it's up to you which one you like, but I like the sphagnum moss. I also like the vermiculite. That was actually pretty good. So what I did was I combined the both of them. So now my growing germinating seeds mixture is now going to be a sphagnum moss, peat moss mixture, depending on what kind of moss I have at the time, and the vermiculite. I'm gonna be combining both of those together and that's gonna be my growing medium for the future. I know I'm gonna be using soil, but that's only if I don't have the vermiculite and I don't have the moss. Speaking of which, this tray actually has the vermiculite and the sphagnum moss mixture already. I just really like it. The only problem is, remember, it tends to dry out faster than your soil. Half of these seedling trays actually dried up and died because I was not paying attention enough, I wasn't mindful enough, about the watering requirements that sphagnum moss and vermiculite need. So that they're gonna need more water than the soil and I totally forgot about that. So oops, that happened. But live when you learn, that's okay. But that's the medium that I'm gonna be using right now. Let me know down in the comments below what kind of growing medium do you use to start your seedlings? I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got some good information out of it. And if you did enjoy this video and you wanna show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video every week and then some in between. And last but not least, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. You can drop me a message. I post a lot of, you know, a lot of DIY projects, a, little fun, a lot of funny memes, and a little bit on the personal side. So both of us are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. Until the next episode, you guys, peace and love.